Welcome back. I have told you today that I'm going to have a series of uh, uh, guests, you know, important voices in my view. People whose views, I believe, is going to determine the trajectory of, of this country. Now I have with me uh, Mr. Reno Omokri, former presidential spokesperson, and he is also speaking to me uh, uh, virtually. Uh, Mr. Reno Omokri, welcome to Inside Sources. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So I'll just start, you know, the regular way. Now, if you look at where things are today in Nigeria, uh, Mr. Mokri, do you think that Nigeria is on course to that great country that all of us, I dare say, dream about? Reno? Well, I think so. Um, a lot of people tend to be sentimental about it, and we must focus on what cannot lie. We must focus on facts. During the election, during the campaigns, all of the candidates, except Rabbi Mr. Kwakwas, said they were going to remove subsidy and they were going to float the Naira, all of them. And that's what we expected because the Buhari regime ought to have done that. They didn't do that. They kept on borrowing $1.5 billion every month to sustain the Naira at the level, sorry, the Naira at the way that it was. And then we're also borrowing to sustain full subsidy. When Bonatinibu came in, what he's done is not different from what Wazir Atik or Baka said he was going to do and what Peter Albi said he was going to do. So it amounts to intellectual dishonesty for anybody to begin to come here and then to need to say that, oh, Nigeria is collapsing. No, we're going through some growing pains. We're being winged. But what is happening right now, I support it. Paul subsidy had to go. We know the Naira had to be floated. We couldn't have had multiple exchange rates. And we're seeing that the results are happening. I mean, it's very, very clear. Foil importation into Nigeria has reduced from 2.49 billion liters every single day. That was in May. And then in June, it reduced to 1.49. And right now, as I speak to you right now, it has now reduced further to 1.1 billion liters a day. So foil importation into Nigeria has reduced by more than 50%. So that means the removal of foil subsidy has worked. And then also, local refinery has increased by 8%. So that means that we're now getting a backward integration of foil. And it's not just that. If you look at the issue with Nigeria, before foil subsidy was removed, the problem that we had, we're having trade deficits. I'm sure you saw the figures from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, the National Bureau of Statistics. Nigeria now has a trade surplus. As at the last time the figures were given in September, we've not seen the next figure for the last quarter of 2023. But for the third quarter of 2023, we had a surplus of 2.2 trillion. So we are seeing results. And it's not just that. Now, capital importation into Nigeria has increased by 66%. So we are actually seeing results. So I mean, it's, it's very, very intellectually dishonest to now say that, oh, that Nigeria is in a terrible situation and we've never been this bad since the Civil War. No. And to say that, that there's no rule of law in Nigeria that is the rule of man, no. Peter Obi went to court. Even in his own petition when he went to the Supreme Court, and even before then, he never alleged that he won the election. Read his petition. I've read it. I don't know if other people who are making these claims have read the petition. He did not say that he won. What he claimed is that the president, Bola Tsibibu, could not be president because he had been convicted in the United States at the court in Chicago. That was what he was alleging, and that the vice president, the current vice president, was not properly nominated because he had been nominated twice, once as a senator, and then on the other side as the vice presidential nominee. And in both cases, the court threw that out because on the facts of the law, he was wrong. He did not say that he won. And this is why, I mean, even if you're going to say, okay, everybody is a psychopath, are you going to say Professor Wally Shoinka is a psychopath? Professor Wale Shenka, who this man mentioned the civil war, he went to prison for 22 months during the civil war because of Biafra. Are you going to say it's a psychopath? This is a man that said, look, and I'm quoting him, they know they came third. I know they came third. This is what we call in Yoruba, bad you way. And that's what they are trying to do. Look, there is no rule of law in Nigeria. This, I mean, they are talking about an electronic transmission of results. Before the election, January, the Labour Party approached the court to say that the court must compel INEC 
to electronically transmit the results. This is before the election, January. The courts looked at the Electoral Act and they ruled against the Labour Party and told them that by virtue of the Electoral Act, INEC is not mandated to electronically transmit the results. Also, in the chamber of the National Assembly, the Senate President at that time, Lawan, uh, 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 said it there that according to the Electoral Act that we passed, INEC is not mandated to transmit the results electronically. Now, during the election, I was for Wazir Atika Obaka. I am still for Wazir Atika Obaka and the People's Democratic Party. But where there is an election, you support your party, you support your candidate. After the election, you support your country. Nigeria is moving forward right now, and we have to support Nigeria. You cannot say that Nigeria is now, I mean, it's, it, there's never been a worse time for Nigeria. Nigeria is, uh, 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 I'm saying, the civil war. The facts on the ground do not bear that out. How many people have been arrested in Nigeria now for I mean, violating, uh, for hate speech? It's not happening. There's freedom of speech in Nigeria. You go on Twitter and you see the kind of horrible things that people are saying. Some of them are calling for military coups. Some of them are saying that, okay, that there's going to be uh, the kind of Venezuela situation in Nigeria. Have they been arrested? No, they've not been arrested. So for people to say that it's an act, I mean, it's, it's, it's part, it, it speaks to their irresponsibility. If you did not win an election, it doesn't mean that you must drag your country down. No, there's another time. I tell you. Okay, Rado, just, just, just so we, we have a conversation, you know, and I do appreciate your, uh, your comment. Now, would you say, you know, uh, and this is a view that is out there, you know, um, and I think, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Farutini, who was spoken earlier, had also referred to this. Would you say that Nigeria is free of impunity, you know, in your view? Is that your view that the Nigeria is entirely free of impunity? Or, or you know, or, or what, what is the level of impunity, if you think there is at all, uh, and you think it is it is so damaging that if you don't sort it out, uh, that's a major problem. Well, I mean, it is silly to expect any human society to be free from impunity. It's very silly. If you look at the United States, you had a situation whereby you had the January 6th riots, where you had, in fact, some people call it an insurrection. You know, you had a situation whereby you could hunt the Biden and his laptop. You had a situation whereby, you know, charges were brought. And then you saw that when charges were brought, the Justice Department in the United States, what they, they showed favoritism to some people. There is impunity in every country. This is, this is earth. This is not heaven. When you get to heaven, you're going to have perfection. You're dealing with human beings. Right here on earth, you're going to have impunity. But we need to focus on what cannot lie. Facts. You have several indexes. First of all, you have the elected political leaders index which is published in Reykjavik, in Iceland. It, it says that elections in Nigeria are now better. We've had 25 years of uninterrupted democracy. And then we've had a situation whereby party has handed over to party, and then a, 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 a city president has lost an election, and then handed over to another president. So we've crossed all our milestones. Nigeria right now is no longer a nascent democracy. Our democracy has deepened. In 2027, I'm going to work to unseat Ola Tinubu, but until then, I'm going to support my country. I'm going to start I mean, being bitter and coming to want to tear down the whole uh, situation by saying that, okay, that there's infinity, there's no rule of law in Nigeria. No, there's rule of law in Nigeria. In this country, in Nigeria, you had a minister. That minister, she was exposed because she asked that private money should be paid into a private account. What happened? Within 48 hours, the president removed that. Is that a really? Is that not rule of law? So why we begin to say things like that? Look, if you look at uh, X today, if you look at uh, Twitter today, you see that some young men are bringing out, they are spilling a kind of worms about the Labour Party. What has happened? I mean, these are Labour Party people. Labour Party people versus Labour Party people are okay, bringing out receipts of how they are paid in dollars. How some of them have bought mansions in Abuja. How some of them have bought mansions in Lagos. How some of them have been spending huge amounts of dollars. Now, this is Labour Party itself. So, is there no impunity in the Labour Party? Look, in any human organization, human community, human situation, you're going to have impunity. But to say that Nigeria is not being governed by the rule of law is not true. Nigeria is being governed by the rule of law. There are laws in Nigeria. 
the rule of law is not the rule of your sentiments. For you to say that Nigeria is not being governed by the rule of law, I mean, I'm going to have to disagree. These facts don't lie. Okay. Thank you, Renu. Last question. You know, um, so do you envisage or do you advocate any set of political reforms? You said that, uh, and you know, you are, you are, you are very right, that uh, we've had uh, unbroken civilian rule, you know, democratic uh, uh, period since 1999, you know, I think about uh, 25 years now. So what kind, if you think, what kind of political reforms do you think can take us to the next level? Last question. Well, the kinds of political reforms that I was looking for are being implemented. First and foremost, we have the oral summary report. It's being implemented now. So we're going to have a reduction in federal government, ministries, departments, and agencies. That's what I've always been clamoring for. If you look through my past, I've written about it. And it's being implemented. Secondly, now we, the government is now implementing also. They've said that they're going to implement state police. Now, this is something that we've been calling for, that we need state police in Nigeria, we need community policing in Nigeria, that policy should come to the state level and to the community level. Then also, we've got devolution of powers. And that's what we want to see, devolution of powers. And then this administration has said, okay, they are going to bring about devolution of powers. So we need that. The only thing that I would recommend that I have not, have not yet seen is that we need to implement the OAS report on the INEC, whereby the president should be stripped of the power to appoint the chairman of INEC and the commissioners. And so it's going to go to a, a, a body that is non-partisan, that is very objective. So that's what I want to see. And then also, I want to see a more vigorous by Nigerian campaign. I'm not seeing that with the Bola Tulubu administration, and I'm a bit disappointed with that. You know, we need to be pushing, and this has to come at the governmental level, we need to be pushing a by Nigerian campaign. And so I we see, not be I, I, I see that you wear a lot of astro okay. No, no, I mean, everywhere I go, I mean, I'm sure you saw when I was in Congress in the United States, I was received in Congress in the United States by, by, the, um, by Congressman Jay Sessions. I was dressed from head to toe in Nigerian outfit. You know, I was at number 10 Downing Street. You know, I was dressed in, from head to toe in Nigerian outfit. We need to promote Made in Nigeria. We need to tell people, look, if there is a Made in Nigeria alternative for the goods and services that we previously used to buy foreign, buy a Made in Nigeria alternative. Be with Dangote, call with Glow, drive Innocent, fly Airpiece, you know, eat breakfast with NASCO. We cannot have a situation whereby 133 million Nigerians are spending $20 million a day on airtel and MTN. The money is going to South Africa, the money is going to India. That's putting downward pressure on our Naira. And also, we need to, as part of the reform that you're talking about, we need to fight corruption. And corruption in Nigeria right now is more in our regulatory bodies than in actual corruption of people stealing money. You cannot have a situation whereby we have in Nigerian Communications Commissions former head of the Nigerian Communication Commission, who is now the chairman of the board of MTN, a former chairman of the Federal Internal Revenue Services, who is now sitting on the board of MTN, a former minister of information and communication technology, sitting on the board of MTN. It will not be happening, it will not be allowed to happen in South Africa, where MTN is from. So if we can take care of all these regulatory issues, if we can promote by Nigeria, our economy is going to get better. If we can do all these other reforms, we do a Western year report, police, uh, state police, and then the race report, the political situation is going to get better in Nigeria. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Redo Mokri. Uh, you know, sp speaking to us virtually, I believe from the United Kingdom. Thank you for your views and thank you for coming to Inside Sources. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.